Hi, Paul Hogendorn in Three Point Technologies once again. In an earlier session, we spoke about metrics that matter for the operators, metrics that drove behavioral change on the floor. Today, I'm going to talk a little about metrics that matter for management. I'm, I'm surprised how many times I go into plant floors where people are aiming for metrics that really don't impact or influence the outcome and really don't line up with their objective. In some shops, I see a focus on improving OEE without really an understanding for what OEE is for their shop. For instance, in this particular case here, we've got many, many machines. OEE might be a metric that mattered for Press 11, for instance, a machine that was going to run to a specific rate all day long. But OEE wouldn't matter as much for Press 8 or Press 12, or jobs that had a lot of setup or made a lot of one-time parts. However, what's sometimes more important, or many times more important than understanding or trying to improve the OEE of a specific machine, it's really understanding which machines are your bottleneck. I often see cases where improving a single machine's OEE actually gets in the way of improving overall productivity and throughput. It's important to understand where your bottlenecks are before you start looking at improving the efficiency of specific machines. For instance, I've just taken a snapshot of a factory of all of the machines in that factory for a month. This is the overall machine efficiency, the overall company's efficiency for all the machines for the 30 days in the month. And here's the efficiency on the machines on a machine by machine basis. Overall, they're running 66, 65 percent. It looks pretty good. When I look on a machine by machine basis, I see a completely different story. Some people will take a look and see these 74s and say those machines are running great and these 34s and 50s are running poorly. However, the opposite may be true. These could be very, very old machines running very, very slowly. and They're hitting great OEE numbers. If you replace this very, very old machine with a new machine that runs faster and incurs more setups and maybe sits idle because it's running faster, it might be running at 50, it might be running at 34. It's very, very important that you don't take that raw OEE number and assume that the higher the number, the better. For instance, in a CNC shop, a tool and die or tool and mold shop, my experience is that machine utilization number between 55 and 75 percent is probably optimal. Below 55 percent would indicate that you have capacity and can bring in more work. Over 75 percent, however, might mean that you're running slow machines that need to be replaced with faster machines. In my experience, I find that OEE is often an effective measurement if you're in a steady state production where the same machine is producing the same part regularly. But I also find that OEE is not an effective measurement if the machine is running one part one time. Don't take the OEE number and this mythical number of 85% as being the goal you're aiming for. Know where your constraints are, know what your machines are capable of producing, and know what you should be focusing on first.